Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs. Glass. Now when I'm doing YouTube videos for you guys, I get a lot of questions in terms of what I'm using on my Android device. And one question that pops up on a regular basis is what is this black bird just down here in the bottom right or in my app tray or wherever you guys have seen it. And what this is, is this is my Twitter client of choice and it's called Talon. Now some of you may or may not be aware of Talon, but I thought I'd give you guys a quick look at Talon as you guys have been asking exactly what that application is. So let's take a look. Now the reason why I use Talon is that just for the look and layout of the actual application itself and the fact that there's some options for themes and just to change the look and feel of the app. So you can see here that the first thing that you're granted with, as most Twitter clients have, is your timeline. Now if you pull out this sidebar here, you've then also got app mentions, direct messages, favorite users, retweets, and favorite tweets as well. So it's got everything that you've liked or commented on all in one place, which is definitely nice. You can also tap on this to get options for other accounts. So I've got here Copper versus Glass and also my own private Twitter, which is at cab from 1989 if you wanna add me. Up here in the top right hand corner, you've got the option for a new direct message and you've also got the settings as well. Now you can see that there's quite a lot of settings just for a Twitter app. So you can see here that you've got UI settings, which can change the layout, theme, you can add night mode, the widget theme, etc. And in some of these you've got, for instance, in layout, you've got talent in terms of the look and feel, hangouts, which makes it obviously feel a lot more like the hangouts app. And you've also got the option for full screen, which if you are using a relatively new device, then it's gonna work. With something older, for instance, like a Galaxy S3, for instance, or anything like that, it may not work, but if you're using a Nexus device, it will go full screen mode. Now, it's not necessarily exactly full screen. All it does is kind of get rid of your bottom bar down the bottom, so your on-screen buttons are part of the application. The nav bar at the top is still gonna be separate, so it's not necessarily exactly full screen unless you wanna scroll up. Um, and in some instances, like you see there, when you're scrolling down, it's not full screen. When you scroll up, it does go full screen. Um, I've had it occasionally where the app will just stay full screen, um, which is definitely maybe what you want on an application like this. Um, but in some instances, the black bar does stay at the top, which can be a little bit of a nuisance. You've also got theme options as well. So you can see that at the moment, I'm using the light theme. You've got options here for the dark theme, which again, if I just head back, it gives it more of a gray effect. And then you've also got a completely black theme as well, which again, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of, um, but again, if that is something that you like, then it's good that the option is there. I myself though prefer the lighter theme, um, just so I think it gives the overall app just a bit more of a nicer look and feel. Also in the settings here, you can got a night mode. So for instance, if you go onto this, you can choose when to have night mode turn on. So for instance, you can have it set for 10 o'clock onwards until the next morning, or you can use this dial here to go through different times, which is a nice feature. And all it basically does is make the application slightly darker, um, not necessarily the dark mode or anything like that that you saw in themes a second ago. It just kind of dims the screen and things like that, which is a nice option. You've also got the widget theme options. So if you wanted to have a completely different look on your widget, so for instance, for me, I have the black theme because I think it shows up better on a lot of wallpapers. You've also got the option here for text size. You've also got the font type as well. Um, I just keep it on Roboto Light because that's pretty much the system default at this stage. And you've also got the option to add on themes or make your own theme. Now, I personally haven't had a lot of luck with this. And one of the reasons is it disables some options. So you can't use emojis. And obviously, if you need to report bugs and things, then you can confirm them without a custom theme applied. And, and it just kind of gets a bit complicated in my opinion. So you've also got the other options, which is UI extras. So hiding the action bar, for instance. So you can do that if you wish. And you can go from use to first toast. Uh, now basically what this is, is instead of when you go into the app, it goes to the first tweet that you had. It gives you the option to scroll to the top, which is definitely a, a nice option. Again, in the settings, you've also got timeline settings, sync, notification, advanced memory management. In timeline settings, there's not really a whole lot. Um, obviously, you can change the way that certain things are displayed. So whether you want to have the handle and the name or just the handle of someone. So for instance, my name is Michael, but my Twitter is cab from 1989. You can choose which one you want to have. You can choose to have 24 hour timestamps or 12 hour. You can obviously mute things as well. So if you don't want to get a load of notifications, then you've got the option to turn those off, which is definitely nice. In terms of notification settings, you can see that I've got notifications turned on. You've also got a do not disturb 
disturb mode, which you can have as well. And in terms of timeline notifications, I want to get things for mentions, direct messages, pretty much everything that you can on Twitter. I'd like to know about if it is for me. In advanced settings, you've got here that you can change local trend options. So if you want to have the trending for the UK or the world or a certain part, then you can change that in that option as well. You've also got third party services, so shortening services for pictures and things like that. You've got the option to use TwitPic specifically. You've also got enable emojis and things and auto open the keyboard to reply to a tweet, etc. And also some retweet options in there as well. So overall, it's definitely a nice application. I would definitely recommend it if you are a heavy Twitter user. I like how simple and how nice everything looks. And when you actually go onto someone's profile, for instance, if we're going to the copper versus glass, you can see it brings it up in basically its own separate window. So you've got here the profile, you've got mentions, favorites and you've also got pictures on the side here as well so you can basically load up everything and have a look at exactly what people are saying and what they're doing which is really nice and overall it's a really good quick application i've not had any problems with crashing or anything like that and it pretty much works flawlessly on my nexus 5. so this is a quick look at talon which is my twitter client of choice i'm michael from copper versus glass you can add us on twitter at copper versus glass and add myself specifically at cab from 1989 and i will catch you guys in the next video